Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. And today, I am going to give you a blueprint for how to handle this coming Saturday, man. New Year's Eve, awesome time to kiss 10 plus girls. That's right, 10 plus girls. Now, quick warning, every time I did this, I fucking got sick a few days later because all those germs get in exchange. But if you really want to make out with a bunch of chicks, which wait until you do it, man. You think it's awesome now? Once you're done with it, you're like, oh, that was kind of kind of gross. All that different saliva coming into my mouth throughout the night. And that's a partial realization to the bigger realization that like banging a bunch of chicks consistently is a little bit gross, man. It's a little bit gross. I want you to do it. I want all you guys to be able to experience like utmost abundance. But once you do it, you're like, ah, oh, God, dude, it's disgusting. All that vagina and butt dick and pussy being thrown around. You're just like, all right. I'm going to slow down a little bit, got that out of my system, and I'm going to take it easy. But if you haven't done it, brother, I want you kissing at least three girls this New Year's Eve, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it. So what we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to give you a bit of a game plan for how to not only kiss 10 plus girls, but to have a great night this New Year's Eve, how to make it one to remember. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to give you the exact thing to say to kiss all these chicks, man. It works really well. I've done it many times, but like I said... Once I executed a few years in a row, I was like, yeah, this is kind of disgusting. I'm just going to kiss a couple girls, not 10 plus. I think my record was like 11 or 12. I can't really remember. Those nights tend to blur together, but this is a lot of fun. And I want you guys to have the best possible time this coming Saturday. Before I jump into the content, want to read yet another review. This client has requested that he remains anonymous. So here we go. Compared to other dating programs I've taken, Mark Singh hits the nail on the head with what it takes to attract women, especially around frame control. Not only that, the program is very organized with weekly content and assignments. The program is rigorous yet manageable. It's the only program I've seen that supports you both with external and internal game. And Mark gives you the coaching and push you need through weekly coaching calls in the Brotherhood Facebook group. Mark is a great guy. He cares about your success and he gives you realistic and no bullshit advice. At the beginning of the program, I hadn't had sex for two years. Now, at the writing of this testimonial, I hooked up with two different girls on consecutive nights, one of whom was a flame from a year ago who never did more than make out with me and lost interest after four dates. This is an honest review. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate that. Anonymous, you know who you are, man. I really appreciate it. And gentlemen, One thing I've never talked about on this podcast is my close rate. From a sales perspective, close rate is how many applicants come in the door and then eventually close to come into the program. I was talking to a couple different entrepreneurs last weekend and I told them what my close rates are, which are about 95%. And they're like, dude, how how the fuck is that possible? And I said, I don't know, it's just like what I do because my shit works, right? And they're like, no, 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 let me see your statistics. So I rolled everything out. I showed them my numbers. I showed how many guys apply to the program and how many guys actually come in. And every single guy who gets on that breakthrough session joins the program pretty much because not only do I vet them, but here's the thing. And I hope you can believe me when I say this, I fucking care. And that's the thing I told these guys. I was like, dude, I don't have any like magical sales potion. I'm not even classically trained in sales. I don't do anything malicious or malevolent. The two things I demand are commitment for my clients, which by the way, if you do apply, I request that you reply to all my emails within 24 hours. It's not that hard. And the next thing I do is I fucking care. I just want nothing else than to get these guys results. And I think my clients can feel that from me, just like that testimonial attests. So through the process, I feel that guys can really tell that I care about their success. And honestly, man, like the only thing I fucking care about is if I can get you to your goal. If I can't do it, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to manipulate you. I'm not going to try to take your money unless I'm 100% fucking sure. And I think that's why I have the reputation I have. I think that's why guys in my program say what that testimonial said, that I'm an honest dude. I fucking care. I'm going to push you because your success is my success. And that's really the way I look at it. I tell you guys all the time to give more than you ask for in return. And that's honestly what I try to do in my program. Yeah, it's an investment, but I feel you get 20X out the back, then you invest monetarily into it as well as with your time. 
So if you think I'm just some manipulative sales guy who's gonna like trick you into buying my program, nah, man, like I fucking care. And that's why almost every single guy who gets on that breakthrough session moves forward with the program. Like it works, I believe in it, and I wanna fucking help. So that's a genuine request to you to come sign up, man, come meet with us, and we'll see if we can help you. All right, gentlemen, with that out of the way, let's talk about New Year's Eve. Man, New Year's Eve is such an awesome time. The holidays are such an awesome time. Everyone's generally in a good mood. People are ready to party, loosen it up. Girls may have slightly looser morals than they do on a typical night-to-night basis. So this is an awesome opportunity to not only kiss a bunch of chicks, but just yank a fuck ton of phone numbers, have a really good night, get out there and really expand yourself as far as your abilities and your experiences with women. So as I always teach in my program, the most important thing is how you go into the night, okay? So we're starting all the way back at home where you're preparing to go out. Most importantly, as I always talk about, is I want you guys to feel good. I want you guys to be in a good mood. And whatever it takes to get you there, do that thing. If it's working out before going out, do that. I used to call it my pre-party pump or swole before you roll, as me and my buddy always talk about. We'll do like push-ups and fucking sit-ups, do some pull-ups on the door, like just get each other pumped up, listen to some music that we like. Some of you guys may go to the gym, maybe do some type of cardio that you're really into, go for a run, go on a long bike ride. I love to swim laps, makes me feel amazing. So basically I want you guys to feel good and I want you to get ready for a good night out. Now, as you go to the nightclubs and the bars or party or wherever you happen to be, If you're with your friends, what I suggest is not really talking too much, just listening to some music that pumps you up or perhaps the Unapologetic Man podcast to get you fired up and ready to go. Why don't we talk to each other? Because I want you talking to each other when you're out at the nightclubs or the bars. I want you engaging. I want you to remember that the party is where you're at. And I'm going to talk about that more in a second. But what I do typically is if I'm going to direct approach a girl, right? Like let's say I walk into Target or Walmart or a supermarket and there's a freaking banger right there. Like this chick's super hot. I haven't warmed up yet. I feel really cold. I've been in the office all day picking lint out of my belly button being a complete corn sloth and I got no vibe going. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to open and eject with a bunch of other people and I'm gonna do a lap around the venue that she happens to be in, whether it's the supermarket, Target, or even a nightclub, and I'm gonna get myself warmed up. So I wanna take that philosophy and expand it out to this coming Saturday. As you're walking up to the nightclubs, you're gonna see people on the streets, you may see some homeless people, You and your friends will run into other people. Maybe you stop at a 7-Eleven or a gas station. I want you opening people from the get-go. And if I'm like seriously cold and I really don't feel like talking, what I'll do first is I'm gonna go give a homeless person some money. I personally give no less than $5. Lately, I've been kicking them $20 a pop and sometimes I'll bust 100 if I'm feeling really good. But you know, depending on your financial situation, do something that really feels generous to you. Because as I always speak about, what you give, you get back. And I'm telling you, nothing makes you feel better than giving somebody some money. And listen, if you're the type of guy who says, well, dude, he's just going to go spend that on alcohol or drugs. Yeah, maybe he will, but that's not the point. The point is one human to another, trying to help that person out, bring him up. It's not what he's going to do with it. It's what the exchange is that matters. It's you trying to help another human being. And what he decides to do with that help is up to him. It's not your concern. You're giving him money and dude, maybe that money's gonna change his life, who knows? You kick a guy a hundred bucks as I often do, their fucking eyes light up like saucers. They thank you profusely. They say, I can't believe how generous you are. Thank you so much. Maybe that changes their lives, you don't know. But the action of giving is what you're gonna get out of it. So as you're going to the nightclub, what I like to do is kick bums money, talk to them a little bit. I run into somebody on the corner. I'm like, hey, what's up guys? Where are you going tonight? Talk to them about the nightclub scene, whatever. Maybe give a girl a compliment on her outfit. As I particularly like to do is compliment a girl who perhaps doesn't get complimented that much, like an overweight girl or a girl who's not very attractive, who you can tell doesn't feel so good about herself. I like to pump her state. So the philosophy is give what you want to get. Okay, so we're going out there. We're giving value from the get-go. I'm talking, you guys stop at 7-Eleven to get, I don't know, some bubble gum or whatever. You're talking to the clerk. You're talking to people in the store. You're giving the homeless man outside some change as you leave, whatever it takes to get you into that state. Okay, now we get to the lines of the nightclubs or the bars or wherever you're going. Talk to people in the line. I want you talking to the very first person you see. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? You ready to have a good night? 
Freaking stoked 2023 is coming. 2022 was a little rough on us, I'd say. So I'm pumped to get a new beginning. How about you? You know, get that conversation going. Then obviously when you get into the bars, open the first freaking person you see. I like to go to the bar and I just open the first girl who's standing there. I don't care if she's a canyon mule, a mountain troll, or an unfrozen cave woman. I'm talking to her. Order my drink. I personally don't drink alcohol, so I usually get water and I like to put lots of lemon in it because lemon kills bad breath. And you're definitely going to want to have good breath tonight because you're kissing 10 plus chicks, my boy right there. And sometimes you might have some gum too, which is why you stopped at 7-Eleven to get some gum. I personally like cinnamon trident, and I will have that with me oftentimes when I am in the nightclubs and bars, particularly on a night like New Year's Eve to freshen up the breath. And girls will often ask you for a piece. And it's funny, uh, a couple of times I've been like talking to girls and I'm chewing gum and they're like, can I have a piece of gum? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. And I go to grab it. And then she says, no, the one in your mouth. I've had that happen many times. So chewing gum while you're speaking to girls is oftentimes a really good way to get them to want to kiss you, I found. Okay, so you're opening people, you're feeling good. Now back to my point about your friends. You want to have a good vibe in your group. So as you get to the nightclubs and the bars, I don't want you sitting with your back to the bar, looking out on the dance floor, staring at chicks like you're a lion on the Serengeti, waiting to pounce on that innocent little gazelle. You do not want to have that hunting look about you. You want to have the, I'm having a good time with my friends look about you. And I want you to think that you're the MC of the place that you're in, which means everybody's fun is your responsibility. Okay, I want you to merge groups together. I want you to introduce people. I want you to be celebratory about how 2023 is coming, really excited. You don't have to be a spaz. You know, it's like, it's difficult for me to teach this to you guys without me getting to work with you one-on-one -on -one and kind of see how you are so I can calibrate your energy. But it's just basically feeling good. It's not being like Mr. Spazzy. And if you're an introvert, as I've spoken about on a recent podcast, you don't need to be an extrovert. I just want you feeling good, giving value, being a cool guy to the club, being that guy who literally thinks strangers are friends I haven't met yet. And when you have that philosophy, it completely changes your life. Like go into the gym next time and just really have that vibe that everybody here is my friend. We're all American. We all live in the same state. We all live in the same city. We all go to the same gym. We're all into fitness. How many more goddamn similarities do you need to have with this guy? But yet we criticize them, judge them. We're fearful of what they think about us. And as I talked about in my recent episode about ego, we try to out ego them or judge them because they're meatheads. Dude, get rid of all that shit. And instead, have the feeling that I am the light onto this world and I want to give value to others and everybody is my friend. When you simply have that philosophy, particularly this coming Saturday, New Year's Eve, everything is going to change for you. Okay, so we're going in the nightclubs. We're giving value. We're being cool. Maybe you compliment some girls in their outfit. Typical compliment I like to give is, hey, listen, I had to let you know your outfit is awesome tonight. Keep up the good work. And then I'll high five her. Okay, and I'll often approach her, say that, eject, and then I'll come back to her maybe 15, 20 minutes later and open her again. It blows open. All right, so you're going throughout the night. You're getting into conversations. When you get into a few good conversations with a few different girls, I want you to kind of look at their situation and see if maybe they're not with a guy. Maybe they don't have anybody to kiss when the clock strikes 12 right? So I want you to kind of start planning that you're going to plant a kiss on some girl at midnight. All right. And I usually start lining this up around 11, let's say maybe 10, 30, kind of start lining it up and see a girl who is cute, A of all, B of all, very important. She has clean teeth. She doesn't look like she's got a dead rotten tooth on her lateral incisor that when you kiss her, it's like kissing a homeless man's armpit that farted. No, dude, we want clean teeth, good hygiene going on, a chick who's into you, showing you signs of attraction. And then when she's attracted, you say, so, hey, what are you doing at midnight? You got plans? And she's like, well, yeah, I'm going to be here. And you'd be like, no, no, no. You kissing somebody? You kissing that guy right there? And you point at a guy who perhaps isn't that attractive. Like you point at him and say, he told me personally that he's going to kiss you. He's yours. There's nothing you could do about it. And she laughs. And she's like, no, I don't really have anybody to kiss. You'd be like, all right, come here. Pinky swear. We are kissing each other at midnight. All right. And she's like, okay, so now you've laid down the midnight kiss, okay? That's the first kiss of 10. And trust me, bro, we're going to get you 10 kisses 
Just make sure when you get home that night, you get immediately on an IV with a very strong antibiotic going directly into your mouth because, dude, you're about to get so many germs. And I always got sick. It's probably my philosophy, honestly. It was probably my thinking about it. I believe that sickness is oftentimes mental. And since believing that and since working on it, it's a little airy-fairy for some of y'all, I've gotten sick way less. I'm talking like 90% less than I used to because I've changed my philosophy about it, which maybe I'll do a podcast on that in the future. But go to the pharmacy, get that IV filled with penicillin, and we're going to stick that thing directly in your jawbone so that you kill all the germs you're about to get. Okay, so we got that girl lined up for 12 a.m., good to go. Find her like 10 minutes before, chat her up. When the ball drops, you kiss that girl. Bing, one in the bucket. All right, now here is the thing that absolutely fucking works. Okay, so kiss that girl, say your goodbyes. Now you wanna go to a different area of the bar or perhaps even a different bar. And this, by the way, is why I'd prefer for you guys to be on a strip where there's lots of bars and nightclubs, okay? We need about six to eight different bars or nightclubs because we're gonna kiss a bunch of different girls. And if one girl who you just kissed sees you kissing another girl, that shit's drama, man. They get pissed. They'll yell at you. I've had it happen to me many times. You don't want to fuck with it. So make sure you get enough distance from the girl you just kissed. Make sure she's not watching you. Pick a new girl, open her, drop some charisma bombs. When you get a little bit of attraction, and I'm talking like literally you can do this immediately, but I like to like talk to her for like 30 seconds to a minute. What I like to say is, so hey, I actually was supposed to kiss this girl when the ball dropped, but I couldn't get to the location that we were supposed to meet. I got trapped. So I wasn't able to kiss anybody when the ball dropped. How would you feel about helping me to get my New Year's off to a better start? Okay, that's it. How would you feel about helping me to get my New Year's off to a better start? Okay, so you say that you missed the kiss with the girl. Another thing I'd often say is, so hey, I talked to this girl and we kissed on midnight, but it was like horrible, horrible kiss. Like she did the helicopter tongue maneuver, the jackhammer tongue maneuver. It was absolutely horrible. So now I'm stuck here with a shitty 2023, starting with like the worst kiss ever. How would you feel about getting my New Year's off to a better start? Okay, I'm telling you boys, this works. Now, obviously, and I cannot stress this enough, it's all about your fucking delivery. Okay, I could tell this to 10 different guys Five of them will fucking kill it because they have confidence, they're in a good state and they believe in what they're saying and the other five are gonna get some no's. Sure, a good amount of girls will kiss you even if you don't have like the confidence that I have. But dude, I got one every single time because I owned it, I believed in it and I would get her a little bit attracted to me before I actually asked for it. But dude, I've done it right off the bat. I'd be like, hey, hey, how's it going? So I gotta be honest with you, I couldn't get to the girl who I was supposed to kiss Like there was a big crowd. I couldn't get into the nightclub. So I didn't get to start my New Year's Eve with the kiss. How would you feel about helping me kick off my 2023 on the right note? Okay, just something like that. They do it. They do it, especially if once again, you feel good, you're attractive. Okay, now you've kissed two girls. Okay, now you go to a different part. Now this is the hard part is you got to kind of make mental notes of who the girls are who you kissed. Usually you could do about three girls in one nightclub and then you pop on over to the next nightclub. Brother, you could do this until fucking 4 a.m., right? From 12 to 4, you're just going from venue to venue to venue and saying, hey, I missed my New Year's Eve kiss. I'm super bummed. I'm going to be on the corner of my bed in the cannonball position all day tomorrow crying like a schoolgirl unless somebody, somebody, Kelly, can help me get my New Year's off to a good start. They're going to laugh and they're going to kiss you. So you own it. You're confident with it. You make no apologies. And they're in a party mood, man. Like they want to kiss you probably if you're attractive and if you're having a good time and it happens very, very easily. So you could kiss 20 girls literally on Saturday night. You just line up an entire street of just nightclubs and bars and then you go to the flea market and then you go to Target and then you go to the homeless shelter and you're like, hey, Matilda, the bag lady, I couldn't get a kiss tonight, man. My 2023 is sucking. How would you feel about helping me get it off on the right note? And she's like, come over here. And you're like, oh my hell. I'm going to need six bags of penicillin from Target, just a bunch of needles going into my body everywhere in order to kill all the germs you guys are about to get. But listen, there's a philosophy out there that says the more germs, the better. The more germs, the stronger your immune system. So once I started thinking that way and in a way kind of inviting those germs to the party, as it were, again, I need to do a podcast on this. I got sick way less. So the basic philosophy is rather than having a confrontational feeling about the germs, invite them in, man. Say the more the merrier, 
come on, guys, come to the party. I did that with COVID because I knew my family had COVID. My daughter had it and Marissa had it. And I was like, fuck it, dude, come on in. Come on in, I invite you. I've heard a lot about you. The rumors have been spread that you're a bad motherfucker. Come on into this body. Let's see what you got. Dude, I was asymptomatic. Literally nothing happened. I got a tiny bit of a fever, felt a little bit groggy, but other than that, I was fine. And I attribute it to my new mentality because, bro, I used to get sick like six times a year. And now I get sick maybe once a year. And I have a fucking daughter in preschool who's sick literally 16 times a day. All right, gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. But before we do, I have a quick question for you. What are you going to do in 2023 to improve your life? What are you going to do to improve your results with women? Are the women you're currently getting up to the standards that you want? If you were to continue going like this, if you were to marry a girl who's from the pool that you're currently dating, would she be up to your standards? Let's be honest with each other, man. Usually that answer is no. I have a solution that can turn you into a girl magnet where you can go out and get the skill set to literally attract any woman you want, anytime, anywhere, you can go up to her and get her phone number. How many times have you seen a girl where you're like, oh, I just wish I knew what to say. I wish I had the confidence. I wish I wasn't so down on myself. And then she walks away out of your life forever and you're kicking yourself for the next four days as you think about that girl and how she could be in your bed if you just had that skill set. I have a solution to be able to get that girl into your bed, to get you on a myriad of dates every week and make you the selector, to be able to choose rather than be chosen by a girl who isn't up to your standards. Come join us in the brotherhood. Come get on a free one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session with me and my team. We're gonna talk about whether or not we can help you. And if it makes sense, you're gonna move forward, come into the brotherhood and get to your goals with women which is to be able to see any girl anywhere, go up to her, get her attracted to you, yank her phone number, date her, have sex with her if you want to, rinse and fucking repeat. So if you want to get on a call with my team, go to my website, coachmarksing.com, click on coaching, fill in the quick application, submit it. I will get back to you within 24 hours unless it's the weekend. And I expect for you to get back to me within 24 hours to all my emails. And if you're a good fit for me and I'm a good fit for you, we will move forward together and make you an assassin with women. That's it for me, gentlemen. I am off like a prom dress. I am out like an abortion. See you later, masturbator, after a while, pedophile. And I will see you in the next episode. Ah!